Hello! I feel like it's been ages since I've seen you guys. I feel like, like a lifetime's happened in a week. <laughs> How are you? What have you been working on? Um, I didn't get much done this week, but here I am. Hey, late night. How's it going? Um, and if you saw on Instagram, we're making napkins. I know this seems like, you know, the base, most basic of projects, but I'm really into making things for my home right now. And this is something I think about all the time. I, cause every time I eat, we get our napkins out and they're, every time I wash and dry them, they're crumpled, you know, out of the dryer and it bugs me. It really bugs me cause they don't lay flat and they're just like a mess in the drawer. You can't fold them and I don't want to iron napkins, you know, so I'm not like that high maintenance that way. So I've been thinking about this for years cause I, I made them like 25 years ago. Oh my God. I really did. I, it's like almost 25 years and I still have some of those. So I kind of knew which one the poll the, of my poll, um, which one would probably win. And I was right, but I didn't vote for it. So hi, Glenn, you found me. <laughs> is there Glenn is, are you in, are you like saying that you saw a few places because I tried to schedule the stream and then when I went live, the schedule didn't come up. And so, and when I went to change the thumbnail after I was live, I saw two scheduled streams sitting there. So do I need to go back and delete those? Is that what you're telling me? Like, are they confusing us? Tell me, tell me. I'm gonna get rid of them now. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait. <laughs> Cause I'm like, why? Hey Derek, how's it going? Oh, you're starting on your second sleeve. See, when, if you're, are you knitting that? Or is that a sewn thing late night? Cause I, you know, I know you knit. Hey Barbara. Yeah, Barbara. Yeah. 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 Three came up. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to delete those because, um, I see those in my, my, um, so what, how do I do this? You know, I used to always schedule my streams. Um, and then it didn't work anymore. Like it was gone and then it came back like a few months ago and I was like, I don't want to monkey around with that. And so lately I'm like, what happens when I press this? I'm a little, I'm a little more like, okay, I can handle whatever happens. I don't really think that, but I, I try a little bit of that. <laughs> and so, um, I, um, been playing around with it. And the other day I was like, oh, this is so great. Cause now I don't have to type all of this stuff in the description or copy and paste it after I go live. I can just have it pre-filled. But today, two of them, I like it, I saved it. And then I was like, all right, I'm done with this. And then it's like, there's an error. And so then I did it again and said, there's an error. And so then I was like, all right, I'll just go live. And then, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. So Sydney's you're, you're confused too. I got rid of those other two. Hopefully that's less confusing for folks. <clears throat> My throat's a little raw right now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ray. Yeah. I got rid of those. Which one I ended up with Barbara. I, I knew what you meant. Okay. So I'll wait for a few more of you to get here. Um, but I will say, just to kind of recap, I, I know I haven't been doing three streams a week. So normally I would cut one day and sew another and blah, blah, blah. And I could have probably like done. Yeah, Michelle, I know. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know how to get to those. I don't like I schedule. And then when I go live, it doesn't put me in that spot. Like once it did, and then it hasn't since. So I just need to figure it out. Sorry about that. I'll stop using the schedule feature. I just started using it this month. So, so, um, I realized that I really wanted to know what I was going to do before I started sewing them with you guys. So I sewed four yesterday in four different hem treatments. So one of the things I did to start off was buy fabric that's yarn dyed, um, meaning it's not printed, um, cotton, uh, and not to say you can't use printed cotton, but printed cotton, like uh, will have a finish on one side and it takes a while for that kind of like finish to kind of go away and be absorbent and they're not very thick. That being said, if you do two layers of like a quilting cotton, I think it's fine. Um, I just know that this is a better fabric to use something that's yarn dyed and my napkins that I made like 25 years ago are all yarn dyed plaids. Um, and I can't, I haven't been able to find anything like them, but they're still perfect and they do not need ironing. 
I have, Michelle. It's my it's my um, sewing PhD. <laughs> so, oh man, it is the little things though. And the thing is, what's interesting is, um, you guys saw me rant in my stories about how my fabric wasn't cut on grain um, by the store. Two of them, not these. These were cut on grain. Same store. And um, I have not never gotten so many comments on a story as that one. And I'm not alone in this frustration. And so then I went and looked at this really expensive fabric I bought from them and I just got the other day and I had no, no time to even look at this week. And it looks, I am not kidding, like it was cut with a butter knife. Like it's like this. And if you measure the selvage edge on one edge, if you measure each selvage and then the fold, only one of them measures my amount that I bought. All the others are four inches less. It was like $40 a yard fabric and I got shorted four inches on both the pieces. And I won't, I'm not going to bring it up again, but it really does make me really upset <laughs> because it was, it was $200 in fabric for two pieces of fabric for a tank top and maybe, um, a shirt. That's it. It was a splurge. I really, I wanted this fabric every time it comes out and I got it and I was shorted. So anywho, <laughs> um, when you see good fabrics for garment making, you kind of have to jump on it. They're more common now, but there's just those special ones, you know? So, so anyway, so I, um, thought I had pre-washed all this stuff and I had, cause I, my original thing was like, I'm not going to pre-wash this because I'm just going to sew these and then wash them and it's fine because I'm not like wearing them or doing anything. And then as I started like looking at them and looking at, uh, the feel of them, I was like, these aren't really thick enough to be a napkin. I haven't let them know Sydney because it's kind of a, it's just, I just, I just can't really this time. So. Yeah, I don't, they are not going, they are a very big company. They're, they're fine. They're doing fine. I am a fly. <laughs> and I love the fabrics they get. I really love the fabrics they get. So I'm just, I don't know. Anyway, I, I am one of those people where I waffle between calling people out and, and then working through it with them because I'd much rather that I feel like that's a more positive way to go forward rather than calling someone out you know and I may contact them but I'm just kind of waiting it's just been a week you know so I'm just kind of like dealing with it you know so but anyway napkins so I made four yesterday so this piece right here on top is one of my napkins I cut out and then I washed afterward with nothing nothing no hem finishes no nothing and it's it's kind of a hot mess, you know, like obviously there would be, I would finish the edges so that they wouldn't unravel like this, you know, um, but this crumpling, like this wouldn't be okay. So I couldn't even have done this one fringed. It would have been like this, right? So in the pole, the two, that one, so I have four here. The top one in the picture was the fringed one right here. The next one in the picture was the sewn around the perimeter, turned right side out, and then I double top stitched the edge. The next one in the picture was the bound, cross cut binding, not bias binding. And then the bottom one was um, just standard hem. But I made this smaller and hemmed over it. So this only goes up to the folded edge right there. So yeah. Yeah, I know. I will see. I know. I'm thinking about you guys. I will think about it. I promise. I will think about it. I, I, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this, the bound one got so many votes, which I was really surprised because I had no faith in this one at all because binding is binding. I thought cross, cross cut did better than bias cut. Cause the bias, you know, it's going to shrink like this on the bias. And I figured with the cross cut, it would shrink with the fabric. So I cut all of these, you know, pretty perfectly on green. Um, and so um, that was the first thing I did to set myself up. I can see my binding wasn't sewn very good right here. I was kind of in a hurry, but still it's kind of no excuse. 
Um, this one did, I wouldn't do all my napkins like that. Um, the next one that did pretty good, but not very good, is this just hemmed, you know, like I, this is, I could get past this because the whole fabric is nice and flat, you know, that's kind of nice. I was really diligent about making sure the fabrics were flat too, same exact size. This is the sewn and turned one and it, I like the way the edge feels. This one, you know, feels like it has a bump, you know, because of the hem. But this one, you know, feels flat. So I feel like that's nice, but still there's some crumpling. And um, the fringe did the best. So, I mean, the fringe is just like, there's no way for it to, there's nothing for it to get hung up on. This is fine with me because it's flatter. Yeah, I mean, the curling wouldn't be ideal. But the thing is, this isn't fringed yet. This is how it would look. And this isn't finished being fringed right here, so that's why it sticks up like that, kind of messy. Hey, Sharon, how's it going? Yeah, exactly, Ray. Yeah, that's it. I, I feel like not reacting is a better way to communicate. Oh, how's that going, Elizabeth? What do you think of your rolled hem foot? So, this I feel like is the best way to go forward. I also think that depending on your fabrics, maybe you only have a yarn dye, because these are not cheap fabrics, you guys. These are not cheap fabrics. So to line them with another yarn dye, these are nice napkins, <laughs> like crosswise. <laughs> but like I've had my other ones for 25 years. And at the time I was, I was what, like 24 or five years old and Making cloth napkins was a huge investment for me at that age, but I worked at a fabric store where I got a really good discount. And one of the other perks of working there, she gave you credit per hour. Um, every hour you worked, you got 20 cents credit towards the store, which really added up. And it was a really nice incentive to spend some of your credit. You spend, you had credit to spend at the store. So I remember at one point just letting my credit pile up, you know, and I would have like a lot, you know, which is great. These are not interface. Yeah, corners, I don't know about, I don't think you could unless it was a rounded corner. So, these are not interfaced. None of these are interfaced. This is the shirt, the fabric I made my husband's shirt out of. Remember that? Um, is this, this is the side we use as the right side, right? <laughs> you don't want, really want fringe napkins? I know. I don't mind them. They're soft. And the fringe on my others has pretty much like worn away. I keep meaning to bring one of mine in, you know? So yeah, exactly, Michelle. I know, like, I think like, I like the neat edge as well. I don't like how much these kind of shrink, but um, this is kind of a, a smallish. This one I thought would do better than the hem, honestly, and I kind of ranked it above it. And this is what I voted for. I voted for sewn turn double stitched. Um, but honestly, you guys, when you get them out of the dryer, like when I get my napkins out of the dryer, I I have this whole like folding method so they fit in my drawer. You know, I would do this instantly. I would fold it in thirds like this, and then I would probably, I can't remember, how is this drawer? I would probably do this and then fold them so they're in the drawer, and so that's helping to iron them. And if you did this one, th that would work. And this one, Th this would work. That would iron it. As long as you didn't let them get cold and they didn't stay too rumpled. And like I said, I don't wanna manage napkins out of the dryer, so I, that's still a little bit too much work. Oh, and how do you do the, the fringe? The fringe, you know, um, basically, you just sit here, it's tedious, and you just pull off these um, threads like this. So I stitched around the edge and I think a zigzag stitch is a better, uh, more secure stitch. This one's tighter woven, so it would take a little bit more work. Your length grain's gonna be harder. Wait, I think the, wait, I can't remember what, the length versus the cross grain one's a little harder to do. So, yeah. So it will take a while, but you know, you can do it. And so the, one of the reasons I wanted to see how much this would fringe in the wash without me taking it. And I did get about an eighth of an inch on each, you know, so, but yeah, you just sit here and do this, pull it away. 
the corners are always kind of funny too because you know you essentially you're removing the, the fibers both directions so you won't have a corner but it doesn't it kind of blends in and then you need to just like make sure you don't have these long, long loose ones and then trim it off so I did it to here and then I just I just hacked off all the threads right there you can see them in the picture I don't know if you can see that this yellow is really terrible on the screen isn't it it looks like literally looks like mustard in person it's more autumnal but yeah that's how I do it I remember this taking a long time when I made my others but they've lasted 25 years yeah right right exactly <laughs> Yeah, the wonkiness. Uh, basically, Elizabeth, but I think that's a great idea. I think if you, I, and that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. I think if you were looking for something um, simpler, there's, if you have a serger too, this is another reason I didn't bring up the serger. If you have a serger that will do the, um, what's that called? I call it marrowing, um, rolled, is it called rolled hem? You know where the surging is very dense and it creates that surge, really dense decorative surged edge. You could do that and call it good. Uh, we used to do that. The the industrial marrow machine is like, oh my gosh, you guys, it's heavenly. It's amazing um, because you can go off the edge and go off the corner and it's perfect. You don't have to worry about anything. Um, but yeah, you could just surge the edge fold it once along the surge, like say this is the surging, fold it once, top stitch it down, and I think that would be the best. Yeah, it's serious magic, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, so I mean, you can sit here and watch me just do these, you know, like fringe, I think fringe is the way to go personally. Um, the only ones that are curling are the ones that aren't fringed yet. See, it doesn't curl. I'm telling you. But if you don't like the fringe look, uh, yeah, I would I would sew and turn or him. I wouldn't do binding. And this is this is what would happen if you didn't do anything. <laughs> if you just stitched around it one layer. The second layer really helps. Really helps give it some stability. I I did not iron these, by the way. I did not iron any of these. So just so you know, this is how they came out of my dryer. And I tried to just loosely fold them and put them in my bag. So they were a little compressed overnight because I did. I was scared I was gonna forget them, so. Yeah, exactly, Elizabeth. Yeah, I my friend gave me some as a gift and those actually never crumple. But I also think that there's some polyester in the fiber and I'm not sure. I know it's just fabric she probably got at like a Joanne Fabrics. And I keep them, be I don't, I'm not really a big fan of the way they look and how small they are, but they don't need ironing. They're so, they're so satisfying, you know? So, so I, I kind of, you know, I've got a small pile here, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I know this isn't the sexiest of streams, but it's a long time coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to finally start making these. I was doing this with my seam ripper yesterday, and I don't recommend that because I thought I was going to break the tip off of my seam ripper. This is my all. It's a little easier. But, you know, this you just sit near, you know, if you're a knitter, you, you can handle doing this. You sit in front of the TV and do this, you know. This is what you want to give to a little kid and say, pull this off. But once you got it off, that's it. It's done. So really fast to sew, and it takes a long time to fringe. So. Binding strategy for binding love. We're doing four pieces of bind, one for each side. Um, Kind of like, like the hemming. So my hemming... Where is that? Oh, there it is. Um, I wanted to miter my corners, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I totally blanked on how to do it. So I just did it my binding method there, which means I had to sew one long side, and then I picked up this side and started again. So 
like look at my stitching doesn't line up in the corner it's kind of annoying right so um <clears throat> If I would have taken the time to search how to miter a napkin corner, I think that that would be a good way to go. And this, this, this would be how you would be sewing if you bound each edge. You would still have this raw edge. And I also think that if you really wanna do binding, not to stretch it. Like if you watch any of my binding videos, I'm always like stretch the binding a little bit as you apply it. It does make the next step easier but um, you don't want to make it so that your binding edge draws in at all, because that's what can happen with binding is um, if you, because binding typically, if you're doing bias cut binding, it's very, very stretchy. It's very easy to stretch it a little bit as you apply it without even knowing it, and I encourage it further. So if you've bound with me a lot, you'll understand that I, I pull. So when I did this, I did cross cut. I, I think if you really wanted to get super, super picky, you would put the same grain line of binding with the same grain line as your fabric. Oh, you did, Louise? If you find it again, you can send it to me. <laughs> Stop it, Ray. <laughs> no, and even worse, Ray, my thread color is terrible. I couldn't find one that matched very good. So, but see, like, look at, I, I rounded my corners. I tried to keep them as relaxed as possible. So that is not okay with me. I'm looking at the screen to make sure you can see what I see. You know what I mean? So if I had done bias cut binding, this would be worse. You know, this one's the worst right here. Um, but you know how, do you guys have a napkin that's bound and when you do this to straighten out that edge, um, you can feel it stretch a little bit. This one doesn't because I used bias or binding that was cut on the cross grain or length grain. I, I'm pretty sure I cut, did it on the cross grain. Yeah, I specifically did it on the cross grain. So, um, just because I know that's what quilters do. I'm not sure why quilters do that, to be honest, but I know they do. So... So this one, you know, it's not bad. And if you like that kind of um, heavy edge, you might like this. And then if you straightened it out right out of the dryer, fine. I'm not gonna do, I'll probably remove this binding so that it doesn't look so drastically different than all my others, you know? And yeah, I, I am not a big fan of the Marie Kondo thing, but I do fold all my stuff just like, cause I, I have, a, I am a chronic folder here. <laughs> so all my stuff at home does look very nice in the shelves. <laughs> it's not perfect, but <laughs> I do do that just because um, I, it takes up less space. It's like camping, you know? So yeah, I mean, bias is on, if you didn't stretch it while you apply it, there could be some advantages to it. Seamark has it. Okay. That's interesting. So, um, you see Marco Greenlight has a miter corner video. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like I remember that too, actually. Hmm. Well, um, so I think I have two more left. I ran out of the other fabric for the back. I'm going to use this Essex linen. And that's another thing. If you guys would like solid napkins that are yarn dyed, this Essex linen washed so nice. Um, down the middle, it didn't need any ironing, only along the edge. So I highly recommend it uh, if you wanted to go that route. Also, it's more affordable than this was, you know, so something to think about. And I have this blue to go with this one. This blue is really, there was only enough of this so that I, I'm going to only get three napkins. Yes, that bugs me. So I'm going to do these three. And then um, this fabric, the notorious one from my Instagram story, I keep trying to find a piece that doesn't have this flaw on it, but I guess all of it has this flaw too. Um, I'm going to put with the black Essex. Uh, this fabric is a little bit, it's not, it's like kind of, I don't want to say fancy, but um, it is very soft and thin. It's not ideal for napkins. 
Yeah, they're making napkins only with a single layer. And you know, the the reason I got the double layer it idea is um, I know sometimes when you put two fabrics against each other, then you have these two opposing forces that might stabilize them. As long as you're cutting both on the same grain, and I put them both on the same grain as each other, I, I, I really did nerd, nerd out a little bit on this, and I could have taken this even further, but you know, I have a limit as far as how much money I'm willing to spend in fabric on something like this. The only thing that's consoling me with this is that I've literally had my others for 25 years and we've just lost them, especially probably because my daughter probably, like our silverware, sometimes may have thrown it in the trash when she was younger um, because we didn't use them as rags. They just kind of eventually disappeared, you know. So, um I only have like two of each left when I used to have eight of each. <laughs> so that's the only thing that has gone wrong with those. They're, other than that, they're, they're perfect. So I also think, and they're, they're not really that thick. They're, they're probably as lightweight as this and they're fine because, because it's a woven fabric. I really wish I understood fabric better. I mean, I studied in college, but there, that's a whole, like, it's a science and a um, whole industry, and a, it's a huge, it's a huge topic. I am not an expert on it. Um, I just know a little bit about grain line and how things work against each other. But um, I feel like the fibers of a yarn dyed fabric are bigger, and they have more surface area. I feel like I look at it like knitting. Like when you hand knit something, you are going to come across very, very, very few people who actually knit things the way a machine knit thing looks like that you bought at a store. Now I'm not talking about a knit, a machine that someone, a, a home machine knit. I'm talking about like the ones at, in the industry where it's basically they're knitting with thread you know, that is not common, right? So when you're a hand knitter, you're knitting um, with a, you know, at the smallest weight is like a fingering weight or a sock weight. And you would use that for socks, right? Because it's small, small so smaller the weight, the more comfortable the sock is because even a, a DK, which is a little bit bigger or sport, or like a sport weight, that you feel that in your shoes. I, I wear clogs and I don't like hand knit socks on my clogs. They're really popular they're really uncomfortable for me. They're too chunky. So I feel like that's the way to liken it. When you get into the yarn dye, you're getting closer to hand woven textiles and they're using larger threads. That's my rationale for it. I'm not an expert. There's probably people that could tell you a lot more about it. So I feel like there's more surface area and the, the fabric has more body and it feels, you know, that's why it's better for garment making. Um, it's got more drape because it's got, um, you know, like knitting has a knit side and a purl side. So it has a right and a wrong side, right? And the uh, it'll roll if it's like a single knit, which is, means it has a single a, a knit side and a purl side. I feel like wovens are the same kind of, or, or non, non like yarn dyes are kind of the same principle. They have this like right and wrong side, whereas hand wovens and yarn dyes, you can use either side of the fabric. And so that means that the, fa the fibers are pulling against each other so the fabric is more stable and um, not going to pull one way or the other, right? And this is my total <laughs> layman <laughs> rationale, but it's just my experience with fabric as well. So like quilting cotton, it's printed on one side, it clearly has a right and a wrong side and the fabric itself probably had a right and wrong side and that's why they printed it on that side, right? You can kind of see it on a lot of fabrics. And it also acts a little different. Whereas hand wovens, yes, this clearly has a wrong side. Um, it's still, I don't know, the hand woven factor just gives it more body, more stability. That's why I pick it. So, <laughs> right, Sydney? I stopped knitting them. I just didn't like that I'd spend that time on a pair of socks and I wouldn't wear them. I love knitting them. I love the way they look, but I wear clogs, which are hard uh, and they're just not comfortable with them, even though they're really cute. So yeah, Maribel, right? I do too. I really think they're cute. I love, I love knitting, knitting them. So, so these, I think I'm going to hem these. 
I don't think these the fabric's gonna fringe very nicely. Oh, the other thing I did I wanted to tell you guys is that I put all of these through with a pinking blade edge. Where's that one? That's a mess, this one here. This edge was actually cut with a, a rotary knife with a pinking blade. So it didn't do much to prevent the unraveling. Same with the Essex. So just to warn you, if you're gonna throw any of these into the uh, laundry and you don't want um, this and you have a serger, I would serge it. So, right, Cindy? I know, it's a whole like, like people love knitting. I love it, I love it's a small project. And I don't have the, the second sock syndrome issue, so it would be perfect project for me. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I just don't knit them. <laughs> okay, so I think these I'm going to do. We, we, we think the Essex is going to fringe, no problem. Some don't fringe very nice. You know, some fabrics just don't fringe very nice. But this is going to fringe actually nice, really nice, actually. The Essex, because the warp and the weft are two different um, color yarns, the fringe is going to be a different color on each side. You see that? And that's how all the, almost all the Essex are, that because of this, you can see this little um, speckled look to it. It's hard to tell which is the right and the wrong side on, on one of these because it's an equal amount of the two different color threads. Whereas some you can kind of tell like this one right here, right? This one has a clear difference, so you just really be, would need to pick, so. Anyway, this is my stream on how important it is to cut on the grain <laughs> and what certain things do, you know, and it, it's interesting because I was looking for beginning sewing ideas and, um, uh, and I was trying to think like what project would I do and I found this really popular beginning sewing video and the comments were just, they were really awesome on it. Um, because people were so thankful in that video about having that video. Um, they were all, the video had been out for probably five years, but there were all the comments I was seeing were like post the beginning of the pandemic. So people were like, I'm finally sitting in front of my machine. And um, I thought that was really awesome to see. And I wanted to see like what kinds of questions people asked so I could kind of, you know, think about that when I did my own. But the project was napkins. And I remember at first thinking, oh, boring and then I thought why do I think that's boring that's actually brilliant and then I looked at the comments and people were like oh my gosh I have napkins this is so cool and I was like yeah that is actually really functional and really simple so that was kind of neat I love that it was napkins and here I am taking it to the nth degree making it really complicated when it could just be a nice beginning sewing project <laughs> all right I'm gonna iron this I'm gonna sew some of these. I'm not gonna drag this out for you guys. Sewing, watching me sew napkins. <laughs> that camera's still working, I hope, I hope. Let me turn the microphone too. There we go. Oh yeah, it's still working. Yeah, only in the right shoes, exactly. Yeah, like I, I will wear them in the winter and stuff, um, especially around the house, you know. I like that. I like them in my slippers. This could have easily been an ASMR stream of ironing like an hour ago because I was ironing everything but those four napkins and this guy right here. So what have you guys been making? I feel like it's been forever. I know it's only been a week, but sheesh. <laughs> I'm my grad student. I got uh, two videos that I'm going to um, publish after the stream today. One is how to sew a yoke on a shirt, a clean finished way. 
Um, and then the other one is how to sew a collar in a collar stand, like on a shirt, men's or women's, doesn't matter. Um, and I'm doing both because they kind of go hand in hand. Plus the yoke video is literally five minutes long. It's really short. So um, that, and then I also sewed the Charlie Captain, the bodice panel. I don't know, I don't think any of you are sewing that right now, but I thought it would be kind of a fun little specific video to do and it was actually really fun. So, oh, I saw you made your Arden pants. What is WFH? <laughs> oh, I need to change the chat to all the all the chat. Cuz I feel like I just saw a comment. There we go. What have I missed? Oh, I hope I haven't missed anything. Do those have a fly? I don't think the Arden pants have a fly. Weirdly, also napkins. Napkins that work from home. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, smart. Work from home module. Is that the um, button up collared shirt on top and sweatpants on the bottom? <laughs> With hand knit socks to walk around the house in. <laughs> Is that work from home? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> Let me get rid of these big chunks. Yes, it is hard not to just cut this whole thing off, but. Okay, so I have white thread on, and I think um, I'm gonna sew these with white thread. I couldn't find a thread color I really liked, so. So what do you guys think? I think right now these are cut so I can sew and turn them. I think that's what I'm gonna do actually because I think uh, I like the way the edge feels the best. So. Ooh, bummer. You made the cuffs a little too small. All right. We do have a bobbin in here, right? Yeah, I do. I was having trouble keeping this to be sewn on grain. I mean, cut on grain. Because sometimes, you know, um, this is the other thing about grain. So I worked at a fabric store where we cut fabric on the grain. And what I mean by that is when you placed your fabric order, uh, say you wanted, you know, three and three eighths yards, we would open up the bolt and cut on that what we could see the green. If you can't see it, you can feel it and you can hear it in your scissors and you get really good at detecting it. So when I first started working there, I was a little terrified, but you really do, you get really good at it. It's, it's actually really easy to do. And in fact, now you might even try it next time you're cutting off a piece of fabric. See if you can hear and feel the, the green line. Even with a rotary knife, you can hear and feel it. And it would look, sometimes some bolts came into us so twisted that um, it would look like the fabric, like it would be on the bolt, right? So let's say this is the bolt, right? And these are the selvages. This is how it would sometimes look on the bolt. Not that, this would be lined up, but it would look like this. So here's, here's the bolt like this. And they'd bring up their fabric like this and they'd see this, they're like, why is it so crooked? <laughs> You know, and um, we would always cut on the fold because we knew this was on the grain, so then you'd unroll it. And then when you went to cut it, you know, you always cut from this edge, you would open it up and you would cut along the grain. And, you know, back then, it wasn't the trend to not pre-wash your fabric as a quilter. So sometimes the quilters would say something, but most of the time we would just say, once you wash your fabric, it evens up and it does. And so when you would see that, like this, you get home get home, and your fabric looks like it's off grain like this, right? There would be no torquing, I promise. It would be like lined up here, but this would be like this. You could pull it like this and it would even it up just like that, like instantly. <clears throat> but washing it was better, you know? You don't want to distort your fabric. 
And anytime I, I casually ask a fabric store, hey, any chance you guys cut on the grain? It is a hot button topic, and so I hardly ever do. And people get really defensive over it. I don't know why. I'm not accusing them of anything, you know? <laughs> I'm just curious so I know how much to order. And it's really important in things like curtains. Like one time I, I bought all this chiffon, and um, my chiffon... I noticed wasn't cut on grain and I noticed it when I got it home. So I cut all my curtains on, on the grain except for one. The last one it wasn't. And my, I still sewed it thinking it'll be fine. And the, the curtain hung at an angle. Like it wouldn't, it was the weirdest freaking thing. So um, it was like one edge was longer than the other and it probably was. So I had to go buy that much fabric again and you know there was all this waste because i i didn't need the stuff to the side <sighs> so yeah it is a hot button topic for me <laughs> yeah see sydney yeah it's like business on the top party down below <laughs> all right where's my little opening there you can see it I'm just going to do one all the way through. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this was a very, very reputable fabric store. Um, and they, something like chiffon that you would, you would pull a thread for that. It was a polyester chiffon. It wasn't fancy fabric. But it was sheer. You know, all I wanted was something sheer. It was like a dark forest green. I remember them so well. Had them for years. Um, and uh, they were just, you know... A sheer curtain so no one could see in, but I could still see out, you know? But, yeah. And it's important, like, say you wanted just a piece of fabric that you're like, oh, I'm just going to make a little tablecloth out of this. This fabric is gorgeous. I'm going to make a wedding gift. I'm going to buy this fabric. It's so beautiful. And I'm just going to make them, like, a little, like, um, I have, I've had, I have a friend that does this all the time. Like this is one of the gifts she does. She'll make you a little tablecloth, like a little square one with matching napkins. And it's actually a really nice gift. Like the first time I saw her doing it, I was kind of like, huh, interesting. But then I was, I was like, I would never buy that for myself or spend the time to make it. And she gave me one when I, for my birthday before I moved here. And I, I love it, you know? And so if you wanted to just do that kind of sewing and you buy bought um oh okay bye barbara um so if you want if you bought that fabric and you you had allowed only for the tablecloth and the napkins and then you had to allow for truing it all up that's a waste i'm gonna look at this side i oh when i anytime i have a hole i'm gonna turn something i never do it from like, I never leave the hole at the corner. Like, I think originally when I first started sewing, I would have done this. I would have started right here and left this little section open. And I don't like dealing with the corner. So, I know that's kind of front and center right there, but um, it's honestly, I can get it to blend in. This S. I have a feeling these napkins are going to be kind of disappointing. My seam allowance is not even because I'm trying to stay like sewing on the grain and I'm looking at the fabric. Two layers. Uh, I cut the napkins so that I was having zero, almost zero waste at first. And so I was getting three across the fabric and they were about, um, I think they were 14 inches on their shortest side, 14 inches. Like these are actually really big. And I did, I think these are 17 by, These are like 17 by 14. 
So, you know, it'll cover my whole lap. Um, the gal where and I worked at this fabric store, she believed in like half a yard. So basically a fat quarter with your napkin. It, and that's a little too big in my opinion. It feels like you're wearing a skirt at the table. <laughs> so I think anywhere in the, like the 14 inch range. So like this one right here, that would look like, that would look like. Let's see, this is 14 inches right here. And let's see what this is. Nine. And this is, it's like, this is like 15 by 13 here. So. Foam bake, yeah, nice. That's so cool, Elizabeth. Yeah, right, Michelle? But, you know, people started cracking down on cutting fabric like that. I worked at House of Fabrics, too. So, that's awesome, Barbara. Yeah, your own personal tablecloth, exactly. <laughs> that's how it felt. I was like, well, you know. I mean, in uh, I think if, if you were making things for, like, a fancy thing to protect fancy clothes or whatever, I think that's nice and generous, but we don't really... As a society, typically, a lot of us are not eating that way, right? So, I don't even have guests anymore, so I'm not really too concerned about that. Yeah, I hate it when they're too small, too. Alright, so let's see. I'm going to turn these corners a little better before I get over there. All right. The weather's so cool here. I almost wore pants. It's not cold, but I was like, ooh, I could get away with pants right now. Whereas, like, on Monday, it was, like, 107, I think. And then it dropped, like, 15 degrees the next day. Um, crazy. Crazy temperature changes. I think that's just because of the, the smoke cover. But, um... <clears throat> I hope autumn's coming soon. That would be so nice. Turn my corners. I also finished my uh, Lucita dress, and um, I completely forgot, like, everything kind of just changed this week, and so I, but I brought it to work and, um, right, Sarah? Exactly. Am I doing all these with the same side up? I think I am. I'm going to do two one way and two the other way. You know? What is that? Oh, God, I thought that was a flaw. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not ironing anything. Well, you know, the one thing about it is, like, you could always reclaim that fabric for a project if it was that big, but... I find that napkins get, like, they kind of get this permanent oily, not a smell, but like a feeling about, or yeah, I mean, it's more like a, like a scent, you know? I don't like that. Yeah, so my Lucita dress, I, I sewed it all my day off on Monday. It was so nice to sew at home. I felt like, ooh, I'm actually doing something at home. This is so nice. Um, because since I can't like be outside because it was so hot. And um, I was really disappointed in how that fit. I That watermelon dress, did I just get lucky on that one? All right, do I go, I'm gonna go along the screen here. Just lopping off my corners. I never do this now in garment sewing. I always, I'm always like this, trimming around it. I don't know why. I just like this is how I like to do my corners now. <laughs> I'm a lop. <laughs> Let's spend hours on these napkins and then just lop off the corner. 
get my seam allowance a little more even there. Yeah, exactly, Penny. I know. Yeah, we have ours sealed pretty tight and it's still in there. Right, Sydney? <laughs> I know, it's so funny. Guests are like, oh, I don't want to use your nice napkins. I'm like, they're not nice. I thought about doing this as like a Christmas gift, making some cloth napkins, you know? It's a nice gift, like price, like as, mar as far as the price investment is, if you get some nice fabric. And my, the ones my friend had given me, I've been using, is that, what is that? That is coming undone right there. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's look at that in a second. I also, uh, one tip I think, and um, I should be following this myself, none of these are that open weave, but if you're using a pretty open weave fabric for stuff like this, use a smaller stitch length, especially around corners like this, because what will happen is the fabric will just poke out between your stitches, like I think what's happening here, unless I just didn't catch this corner very good, which is also a possibility. No, I think it's just too open weave right there. So let me uh, dial down my stitch length there. My stitch length isn't that long right now. And if you plan on doing fringe, I think a zigzag edge is a little bit better. I'm not doing it because I my home machine's at my home now. So I don't have that capability. So. Yeah, right, Ray, I think so too. We don't eat a lot of like oily food, but we still eat butter and um, we're not vegetarian. So I think that that can be pervasive. My husband makes a lot of like ethnic, well, ethnic, is that the right term? Um, just, he uses a lot of seasonings. We eat food like from all over, from all over the world. Last night was kind of funny. He made some East Indian food and he didn't like it. He made a tagine. Wait, it wasn't East Indian. It was a tagine. And um, he uh, was like, wow, this isn't very good. We are not eating this again. <laughs> and I've never heard him say that before. It was really funny. Okay, see now this is cut a little off right there. This one is okay. That's okay, that's okay, but this is pretty short right here. So I'm gonna have to go with, uh, right, wait, is it this one? Oh, see now this is, line, I'm looking at these white arrows, white arrows. So it's actually okay, it's the, this I follow. Okay. Essex is so useful. It's not the sexiest looking linen, but man, it's just so useful for so many things. I gotta find backing for my twin duvets by next Saturday, because that's what I said I'm sewing with you guys then. I'm holding myself to it because I want to finish them. where my stitching line is. This one's on this arrow and this one's that on that arrow. So why did it look like I was lined up? Yeah, it's not really lined up, is it? Let's see. Does this one make you guys dizzy? Because it makes me a little dizzy. I'm not, a, I'm not like fretting if my napkins are slightly different sizes from each other because they'll never be with one another in any given moment and um, washing and ironing them over time is going to make them do that anyway. 
In other words, uh, like one of my one or two of my napkins is a little bigger than the others because I wanted to get as much fabric as possible. So Moroccan, thank you. Yeah, we had Indian food the other night. Yeah, well, he usually makes all of his sauces, and he did it this time. He used a jar. And he's had a little bit of luck with that lately, and he's just been doing that to kind of save us some time and experimenting with our new grocery store and seeing what kinds of things they have. And he was like, oh, yeah, I don't like that. So, but other things he's been like, oh, I like this better. So, oh, you got border fabric? Ooh. I like that idea. So, Sydney, is that for under your your jelly roll quilt? And it'll be reversible? I like that. Wait, where's this other one? Is this my last one? Okay, yeah. All right. Let's iron. I just almost pressed record for some reason. I don't know why. Bonking that. Oh, I didn't check. Was my was my face camera okay last time? I know I bonked it before. I never look at my face when I'm streaming. <laughs> Sometimes I almost forget to set it up. Put that there so we don't forget it. Stuff like this, I end up pulling it away from the edge and pressing it just like I do with French seams. So then it gets, I can just like get it right on the edge there, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jelly roll. Oh, that kind of border. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know. Yeah, totally. I don't know why, but my brain went to like, you know, fabric with a print on the border. <laughs> I've sewn a few border prints lately and I actually made my daughter a pair of shorts yesterday that I might finish off on, uh, at the end of the stream uh, with border, border fabrics. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about, Sydney, but that's cool. Your fabric arrived. Alright. Okay, so I don't like that. I may have to fix that a little bit. What is this? It's just the fabric unraveling right there? Might be. Hmm. Like this, perfect. I liked the double stitching because I felt like encasing the seam allowance gave me a better shot. And I also think if you wanted to really make sure your napkins didn't need folding, you quilt them. I honestly think that would be the foolproof way Quilts don't need to be ironed, you know, and you add all that stitching on them. Um, the only reason I didn't want to do it on these is because I can't quilt them before I sew the perimeter. You know what I mean? So, oh, our, board, our fire season just started. You know what's really funny? Um, I'm not going to really talk about the fire because I, I know you guys aren't here for that, but, um, uh, when I packed my go bag a few weeks ago, uh, it was really funny. Like I packed it up and I got like clothes in there and jammies and all the things, you know, you want, you don't want to forget anything. And I remember at the last second thinking, wait, these are all winter clothes. <laughs> and I realized that I did that because that's when uh, my parents had evacuated that time. It was in November. <laughs> And so I packed as if it was, I would only be evacuated in November. <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh, you need to put some summer clothes in here. And I forgot because I was a little 
it was freaking me out to do that a little bit and i there was some fires on the horizon so i was like you know we're just gonna do this and um i never did it and so when i got my bag out of my parents on tuesday all i had were jeans <laughs> and button down <laughs> shirts and it was like 100 degrees the day before this is uh i need to fix this so that was kind of funny so i need to fix that <laughs> Because, you know, fire season starts in, like, June, so. <laughs> Look at this flaw. No, I think, yeah, I think you could just stitch it. You know what? Well, let's try it on this one. I'm down. I'm game. You know, um, just stitch it through with nothing in between. I think, like, I think that that would give the best chance because you would be basically creating your own fabric right you would be saying oh i want this to always stay like this so i am stitching it through all all through all layers so so did you pick a solid sydney or did you pick a print i want to find a, a print for the back of mine and I want it to be like a crisp cool cotton do you think that'll be too tightly woven and it'll get hot I was thinking a crisp cool cotton so though it'd be nice and cool uh, but now I'm like ooh, if that's too tightly woven that might be too hot because I that is one tip I got when I was um, shopping for our bed and we were talking like oh does this get hot or anything like that she said oh if you're worried about that um, don't get those high thread count sheets. Get the get them more open. And I was like, oh, of course. I should know that. <laughs> now I don't I don't really have to worry about my, my new bedroom is cooler than my old one. My old one was so hot. Oh my god. These are like little pillowcases, right? I could freestyle with, oh yeah, right? You mean like as in a quilt design? I was thinking like that could, you're really, then, you know, really putting a lot of effort into, I wonder if this fabric will even last. Look at it. It's just kind of, I'll show you. This is another one where the opening right here, just from turning it right side out, really put a strain on it right there. My carumba. And see, my idea is I, I just edge stitch this and then I stitch it again, like a quarter of an inch in, to kind of uh, secure the seam allowances. That'll be nice, Sydney. That'll be really nice. see a little bit of a bubble here so I was just kind of checking it this looks like a little handkerchief doesn't it but it really has this you know intricate design did I get all four no one more <clears throat> kind of satisfying like if I, I was feeling kind of bad that this is what I was going to make you guys hang out with me to do and then I was like oh I'm so excited I'm going to have new napkins 
<laughs> I don't care. I have literally like four left. <laughs> and then all the others drive me nuts. And when we moved here, I pulled out all the ones that like went to matching um, a, a tablecloths. I don't use tablecloths, uh, but they were gifts and they have matching napkins. And so I was like, gosh, I'm really ruining these napkins because um, we're using them without the tablecloth. I'm not ruining them, but they're like getting a different density of, you know, print color. Like they're getting faded, basically compared to the tablecloth. And so I was like, you know, what? I'm going to take these out and I'm going to make myself napkins. And then, um, did you see guys, I see the gal write that funny story. She said that she said, well, I made this, um, these wide leg chambray pants last year or a couple years ago, maybe she said, and, um, I went, you know, they were all done. They turned out great. And then I went to trim up the, um, threads on the inside and I with my rotary knife and you guessed it I cut through my pants and so I turned them into napkins and we call them my our pantkins <laughs> I thought that was hilarious that made me laugh so hard pantkins oh I could make napkins from tablecloths it's actually a really good idea you know oh you want to make a Christmas one um, the camera is okay all right <clears throat> what was I gonna check I don't remember now all right but let's fix this corner right here is this isn't that same corner is it better not be This fabric, not ideal napkin fabric. I am definitely gonna admit that. Oh, this is the corner I cut around the uh, the hacking was better. Wow. I am over this fabric. Okay. All right, so I could definitely stand to get better at making this look straighter, you know? Once it's sewn, no one will know. But I don't like that the um, weave is a little off right there. Table clothes. <laughs> that sounds so sound of music ish. <laughs> table clothes. <laughs> Use the tablecloth to make, you know, a seven piece set of kids' clothes. I want to get this corner crisp, but I'm a little nervous. Nothing is allowed to touch each other. Hands to yourself. Oh boy. Oh, this is that corner. This will be good. I'm going to secure it by top stitching it. Maybe I'll put this um, start stop someplace else. Should we do the other one on this side? What do you guys like looking at? You got to start a new project. Yeah, it is really nice, isn't it, Michelle? I like it. I feel like this doesn't look bad on the camera, but it does in my in person. Um, I feel like it would make a really nice um, top, blouse top. It's it's it almost feels like there's silk in there, or or something. 
or maybe a maybe a rayon and uh i really thought it was cotton i don't i haven't gone back and checked i but it has a kind of a gentle sheen to it so it could just be a a nice cotton cotton can have sheen you know be a nice little you know gift though I like the way that looks um, like this would be nice you know linens like I feel like it's got kind of a rustic look you know the linen with the stitching I love that no I never do Ray I I don't know I just um I can kind of tell, I, it, because it's not super important to know usually, like, <clears throat> I'm not trying to identify it for any other reason, right? I just go by how it feels and if it's right for my project is basically kind of how I do it. I've had to for work before, uh, but it was like when we were really trying to identify what we wanted in a fabric or something, which is trust me so hard to do you know like i would have clients that would say um when i when i wasn't doing like fabric um sourcing for them they would say okay and i want it to have be 12 percent this um 68 percent that and then you know four percent this and basically what they were doing is looking at that favorite shirt of theirs in their closet and they were like I love this fabric you know and so they thought that oh if I get a fabric with the, this that content on that shirt like that shirt has my fabric will be magically exactly like that fabric but that's not how it works you know fabric quantity or, or content is just like measurements are on people you can find 10 people that have the exact same bust waist hip but they look drastically different from each other it's the same thing i mean think about like how many 100 percent cotton fabrics you know and how different they feel from each other so and it was really hard to explain that to them um but i would i just usually wouldn't and just say you know that i'm not offering sourcing and you're gonna have to i would refer them to someone you know so i eventually did sourcing but i didn't do it like that they had to know like oh i'm looking for a you know two, you know 12 denier whatever you know and then i would find that for them and give them options so or i'm looking for uh the, a generic brand of Sufflex, you know, that's what I would do. But I, that was in the outdoor world mostly. Not Fashion fabrics are easier. Fashion fabrics are easier to find wholesale than they are retail. Because they have shows dedicated to it. And reps. I got a little close there. All right. I don't like back tags. All right. Except for the flaw and. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Let's get rid of this little thread. So satisfying. <laughs> I do love folding. <laughs> Which is ironic because the thing I, I don't like about laundry is putting it all away. <laughs> 
you know. So I'm hoping life will be a little bit more normal soon. And then um, I had got some really great projects from Hearts Fabric. Um, I got the Hudson pants. Finally, and then I got the, the Style So Me. Um, shoot, I forgot the name of that cardigan. It's really long and flowy, and it's supposed to be made in a knit. Um, and she says you can make it in wovens, and that's what Hart sent. They sent a woven. I think in the the what is it that they have a lot of in all those colors? It's the viscous linen noil, right? Um, which I think it'll be a good. A good match for that, uh, we'll just have to, it'll be an experiment. Ooh, that didn't line up very good. Bummer. I almost got it. Let's see. I always like to clean this up. Do you guys do this? Do you guys clean up your back stitches? Is it just me? Am I the only weirdo about this? I'm a weirdo about it, I know. And if I'm getting really picky, I will hold this thread so I don't get extra underneath. But that works better on my home machine. I'm going to do these two and then I'm going to sew my others for a fringe. Yeah. I'm not surprised, Ray. Yeah, like... Think about, it would be like saying, um, if you were baking a cake and you were to take all those ingredients for the cake and then come up with um, percentages, like you think at the outset, I'll bet that sounds pretty easy, but I'll bet when you start getting into things like a teaspoon of salt and what that weighs, what that percentage would be, would be pretty dicey, you know? Um, I don't think fabric has quite the number of ingredients like a cake does, but I do still think like um, there are mystery things that happen in, a, in, in like a mill. I, I don't know, I, I've never really, I've visited them, like, you know, as like an instructional thing, but I've never spent time in them. Um, the closest thing I, I've spent time in is places that print fabric, and that's definitely not the same thing. But I, I imagine, like, like, I've worked in enough factories that things happen. You know, like, they're like, hey, we have this leftover white on the bobbins from this last project and it's not the same white do you guys want us to just use it because we don't have any projects that and i could just see the floor supervisor saying yeah just so through it you know and then what if that white wasn't as good a quality as the other one or your garment dyeing they would probably make that mistake of your garment dyeing um and then it wasn't dyeable you know things happen and factory, you think your sewing room fills up with extraneous weird little bits from projects? If you ever see a factory and how buried they get with stuff, it's incredible. And I've worked places like that. Um, and the factory will constantly, like the floor would be like, hey, you guys need to like tell the design room, you need to clean up these things here, you know, like. You, you know if you're not if you're done with that project or whatever and um, and I used to contract with a factory like I did the pattern work for the factory and all her clients and so I was there a lot and I would sometimes be in the cutting department talking to the cutter and um, <clears throat> and just looking at the shelves on the wall it was so stressful for me because I am such a chronic like this project is done. I'm going to tidy it up and I'm going to package it up and I'm going to put the chambray with the chambray and the nets with the nets and the bindings with the bindings. Like even my table right now, it's a mess, but that's how it is. And it's almost ready to like all go back like that. They can't do that because they have to keep it all separate by client. And it is a hot mess. It's like rolls of fabric, elastic, boxes of labels, buttons, findings, thread, everything by client. 
and it doesn't all fit on the shelves perfectly for every person the same way you know and then you know people are walking by it all the time it gets dumped it gets dusty and uh you know then they don't pay you and so she's like great i don't want to return their stuff to them until they pay me <laughs> I've had people say, you should open a factory. And I'm like, uh-uh. Managing uh, customers, it's like herding cats. Not to mention their patterns, you know? All that just doesn't, like, sit on the shelf. So then you got to find their pattern. <laughs> their samples. All the things that got sewn badly that they're going to fix. <laughs> That's just like, you think your sewing room is bad? Trust me, it's fine. You guys are doing good. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of that person. Trish Newberry. I have not heard of that person. What kind of um, patterns does Trish specialize in? And where did you learn about him? This looks, I actually kind of like seeing a little bit of red peeking out. I know it does, makes it look my sewing not as good, but these, okay. I feel like I salvaged these. These look good. Yeah? This looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna switch to blue. And I'm gonna do these others in a fringe way. So this will be lickety split. Um, and then I'll probably hem my daughter's shorts that I just made. I made the, um, the Pearl Soho City gym shorts for her. Um, I did that last year, and she she actually was it last year, you guys? Um, it's blue, yeah. So I made her a pair that was a trial pair. We fit those on her, and then I made her the pair in the red uh, floral print rayon. And um, she ends up liking the prototype better because I think the fabric's like a um, ecot and so they just feel kind of sturdy whereas the rayon are kind of loosey goosey and they feel a little bit revealing over the course of the day you know oh fashion and a lot of hoodies and some really singing oh that sounds cool let's look her up it's a her whoops that was the google video Trish Newberry How did you hear about, wait, was it U-R-Y? Oh, there it is, okay. Effortless and edgy. Oh, these are fun. Wow. Is this a, Slide. Ooh, there's a lot of patterns. I always go to the pants first to see what, what they do. So not really any uh, pants pants, okay. Uh, let's look at the shirts and blouses. I go to the hardest things to draft first. Now you know my secret. That's fun, they do do fashion, which is kind of fun to see. You don't see um, as many um, fashion stuff. Bags and wallets, capes, jackets. Let's look at jack jackets and coats. Ruby Duster cardigan. Oh, cool collar. Edge to edge, Abby hooded. Well, it bodes well. There's a lot of uh, patterns, you know. Where's this? There we go. Oh, you're looking up and oh, that's cool. Two hoodies. Two hoodies, an apron, and a robe.
the Dana cardigan. Okay, wait, let's look at that. Dana cardigan, Dana cardigan. Was that in the jacket section? Was that in the sweaters? What the heck? Where did it go? I'll put the I'll put the back on. Oh, cardigans. Where is that? Oh, like this right here. Let's see. The bat wing style? You really? I am not a fan of bat wing. That's pretty cute though. I wish they would show it with the arm up. It has definitely got that little red riding hood vibe back here. <laughs> cool. Well, that'll be fun. And then, um, no pat, no men's patterns, right? Would you like, uh, what would you, okay, where, where are you guys? Here you go. Me and machine. <laughs> um, Glenn, what would you like to see as far as men, men's wear patterns go? What do you feel like is missing? Oh, and maybe you can tone that down, Sydney, if you want, you know. All right, so these I'm just going to do right sides, wrong sides together. I'm sewing on an old mask. <laughs> That's my sample right now. I've made so many masks lately. Right, I'm just going to see if there's no thread chunks in here. Kind of carefully. <laughs> I do that too, Sydney. And lately I've been leaving off the H for some reason. Because I'm like, okay, when I'm saying, yeah, apparently I start sentence with one word. I feel like that's without the H. But when I'm like, yeah, it's with the H. But yay is yay is Y-A-Y. -Y. You get all sizes. That's nice. Yeah, I've noticed that um, some of the folks doing, I'm just going to do a half inch. Some of the folks doing, uh, like adding their, their uh, expanded sizing. Sorry, I'm just checking my stitches because I can see them here, but I can't see them here because the Essex is a little dizzying. Um, <clears throat> are separate. Whereas, say, someone like, uh, like Colette, slash now seam work always had them all included and i wondered like i wonder how people think about that because um i don't actually know how i feel about it personally because i think i came up sewing in the age um where you bought patterns in a cluster of only three sizes so you would get um there was no zeros then so it would be like six eight ten and the next one would be 12, 14, 16, or sometimes they would straddle one size, so 10, 12, 14, you know? And then I remember people used to complain, I have to buy two patterns to, to be able to grade between the sizes, you know? And then they started adding, putting all the sizes in an envelope, so that changed that, but at the same time, it made it so that we have, like, 12 lines to navigate while we're sewing, right? So you can't make everybody happy, right? That we know that. But at the same time, I wonder I wonder what the happy medium is. I saw Cash Moret is now going to be offering sizes smaller than 12. And I'm the 12, they're 12. So I, and I, but I, when they first came out, I wasn't, I didn't make it into their size range. And there was a couple dresses I really wanted. And I almost complained. And I was like, why would I complain? These folks need sizing. And so I didn't say anything. Cause I was like, I'm capable. And I wasn't going to complain, complain. I was just going to be like, dang it. I really wanted that Lennox shirt dress in my size. And I was like, no, you're going to shut up. <laughs> so I shut up. All right. So these are done. Now I just got to fringe them. Um, 
But now I see that they're offering that, and I, I'm not at all, like, thinking, oh, I should get access to all the sizes at all. Because uh, I also don't think that, you know, if I was going to start making them for friends, then they, you know, they're going to have to eventually buy the pattern, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Glenn. I mean... The, and, you know, it's interesting because I follow a lot of men's wear, men's, men, male sewists, and none of them have started their own pattern company, obviously. Oof. That was a little close there. Do I back up or not? Do I back up or not? No, back up. The only patterns I see being developed or product I see being developed is, people, is men sewing um, bags and leather goods. And I don't, I don't look at any of that stuff just because it's actually kind of um, hard to look at some of that stuff because I'm like, oh, don't do that, you know, and I'm not going to tell them what to do. <laughs> but they're, they're learning, you know, so that's awesome. And you learn by doing that because some of that stuff, like, I don't know anything about leather making. But some of the other stuff, like the outdoor stuff, I'm like, it is, uh, there are definitely some do's and don'ts in that world, and you can't tell people you can't do that until you learn why. And, and mainly it's just things like, you can't do that to that bag because it's going to make it five pounds, but they want all that stuff on there. Or they want to make it so that it looks a certain way, but I'm like, yeah, but you can't manufacture that affordably, you know? So there's just all that stuff. I'm typically hands off. People need to do what they need to do, you know? Like, I'm fine with that. I do not know better. And you know what? Sometimes people innovate in a way that makes you think, hey, they figured it out, you know? Yeah, right, Glenn? I like, I like thread theory, too. I think, um, and I think, like, in a way... She's done a good job of taking some menswear patterns and doing things that aren't typical, you know? But at the same time, I get asked by people like, hey, how do I put a yoke on the Jutland pants because there isn't one? Like, they want the typical pants. I'm aiming for plus signs on here, and I got a little... This fabric, it's like, even though it's on green, it goes barely over there. really want to be on green on both. It doesn't matter if this is uneven because once I fringe it, I can just cut off the fringe. I'll probably just cut that off so that it's the right length to begin with so I don't have to fringe anything extra, you know? And so I think zigzag is a little more secure for a fringe. Um, but I haven't had any issues. All right, so now I have two more left. And if I want to do anything to the ones that I've made. And so I'm going to fringe these as well. This fabric, this, this, look, look at, oh, I guess it looks kind of heinous in the face cam too. <laughs> All right, we got the blue done. Um, I think I'm going to do this color thread this time. Wait. Yeah, I'm going to do this color thread on the bottom. So. I've heard that there's a lot of men's patterns on the free Wait, is it free sewing patterns something? Free sewing, wait. I'm trying to remember what the site is called. It was a guy who told me about it. Um, but I don't know. I've never looked. And you know, if they're not good patterns, then what's doesn't matter that they're free. Am I right? I haven't done I usually, I do this usually after every bobbin change, but I don't tend to do it on camera. 
uh, but I really needed to do it that time. All right, I'm gonna do this from this side. Oh, but I can't see my plus signs. Ah. I'm just going to see how close they are to the edge. I guess theoretically, if you wanted to make your fringing a little bit easier, you could just keep throwing them in the laundry over and over, and eventually you'd have like half of it done. <laughs> right? So freesewing.org. I knew it was a .org, but then I questioned that because I was like, aren't our .orgs um, non-profits? Charitable non-profits. You know? It works on your own measurements. Really? Like you input your measurements? That's very interesting. I should check it out. I think I did so good, so let's look. It's not bad. See, here's my line. Here's the plus sign. I go through the plus sign here and around it there. It won't be that noticeable when it's all done, but still. This would be a really good one to quilt because you could go right through the edges and it wouldn't be a big deal, except all your back stitches would be really close to that. So maybe that's not a good idea. Hmm. Interesting. All right. This one is my last one to sew. And then I'm going to probably look at if I can do anything to the others to make them all a little bit more cohesive. And then I'm deciding whether I bind the bottom of those shorts or I finish sewing my um, Charlie Kaftan <laughs> or do I make that a video you know and see the here's plus signs here and this is the edge of the fabric there. This edge straighter? It is a little straighter. Let's pull it over here a little bit. Like that. Get this nice and flat. These have been washed. They're pretty reliable. broke my thread. I think that's happened one other time. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe my needle's getting a little tired. You know what I want to do, and I'm not brave enough to do this as far as like the social repercussions. <laughs> I know that sounds so tantalizing, doesn't it? Um, I want to take store-bought patterns and make them custom to fit me and show people how to do it. You know what I mean? Like, or even worse, I want to say, oh, this is how you design, this is how you create the pattern to make this pattern. You know what I mean? Not, I, but I don't want to take money away from those companies. The only reason I want to do it is if, like, say you're like me and you have a uh, custom dress form, or they don't have your size, and you want to know how to do it. Because I'm kind of in that spot now. I'm like, okay, I would like to get this new pattern, but I'm going to have to change it to fit me. I could just draft it faster, you know, so 
Or there's a couple patterns out there that I think are really cute, but they're not <laughs> drafted very good, and it would be fun to kind of go, all right, this is how we can fix this, you know? You can kind of see my bobbin poking up through the stitches. You probably can't because I have the autofocus off, but you can see how it's a little bit dark between each stitch. That is because I have a chocolate crown top thread and my bobbin is this, this tan thread. If you're kind of facing that and um, you really need it to not show, you just need to monkey around with your tension. And like the, the re way I could have fixed this one is to tighten up my top thread tension a little bit um, or loosen up my bobbin thread because you want them to kind of meet in the middle, right? Not one go towards the other takes a little trial and error, but I can do it. Oh, wait, I could just do this with the rotary knife. Yeah, well, I do think I will do that as a class, Michelle. Uh, I'll do it for tops and I'll do it for bottom bottoms because I think that's something people really do want to know. Yeah. Yeah. So true, Michelle. I think you're right. Or I think uh, very, very commonly, you might have finally hit the holy grail and you found a pair of pants that fit you the way you love. And then someone in your family member family tells you... You know, those pants are a little tired because you've been wearing them for 20 years, you know, and you need to copy them. Copying a pair of pants after you've been wearing them for 20 years isn't a really good idea, but um, maybe if you could have right when you got them, right? That's the one. I don't know why I'm being so precise. I'm going to do this with a rotary knife. <laughs> All right, so this one's done. This one... And this one, do I just leave? You know? Yeah, exactly, Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think, like, um, I, th I think, like, I don't know. I, th I think like a lot of pattern companies do a really good job in saying, hey, we have this blog post on how to make a long sleeve version or whatever, you know? How come you stopped, Glenn? <laughs> yeah, right? I know, Penny. I mean, like, that's the thing. There is some places where it would be really useful. All right, so maybe what I'll do here is I'm just gonna put my stitch line just inside this and then I'll just remove this later on when I'm um, taking out the the uh, for making the fringe I'll just remove this and make the remove didn't do the fringe yeah I mean exactly maybe the hacks blogs yeah exactly Sydney I know they're really good they know that their pattern would have been good with this other view. But it, after making patterns, I know that it does get to be kind of a rabbit hole. And the zip double really taught me that because I really wanted the zip double to be have an option where you don't have to use plastic. And um, but I know that I wanted to stay true to why I released those patterns, and that was to let people who wanted the original design, sewn the original way, have that pattern. But then I was like, I really want to make a point and make a plastic-free version of this. And my graphic artist was like, oi, this is a lot of use. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but uh, I'm only going to do written instructions for one is that okay and she was like um you can do whatever you want but I just want you to know I've already spent this many hours and I was like at a hundred dollars an hour you don't want to hear that so well this is very crooked so um I uh am not gonna do the beauty thing instead you do the blog post 
Or, and that's how I did, like, I did add the, like, oh, you want to make that pocket a zippered pocket. And that's what, that's kind of one of the things I came to the realization of when I kind of sunk my teeth into what I'm going to do this September. I am going to start spending more time with the things I already have done, you know. And like that's like that thing, doing things like that. All right, so this will be fringe. I'm going to remove this and fringe it at the same time. And then, because I'll leave my seam allowance unadulterated right there for the fringing. These two are hemmed, and I think I'll just leave them like that. And maybe they'll be they'll serve as a good experiment, right? I can kind of see. Maybe I've favored having it that way instead. But I do have my red and black set. All right, so how many is that? One, two, three, four. This should be six, seven, eight, nine, plus four. So that's 13 new napkins. That's great. That's great. All right, so if you guys want to hang out, this is what I'm working on. So I made a pair of the city gym shorts with this border print. Don't you wish you could wear these like I do? <laughs> these are so cute. And I lined them with the same fabric on the inside. So they're essentially going to be reversible. <laughs> um, except for my label. But I cannot find binding. Here's her waistband. Um, Christmas then COVID, now I'm just idle. Oh, yeah, exactly, Glenn. Isn't that funny? Like some people were like, I'm going to learn how to bake bread. And other people were like, I'm going to learn how to survive. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I was really jealous of all the people going, I'm going to learn how to play a musical instrument, speak another language, bake bread. I was like, I'm just going to go to work again. So aren't they cute, Nicole? I made a scout tee out of this fabric and I had this awkward amount afterward. And because the border print is on the selvage it selvages, it already like I bought this at Hearts Fabric, by the way. They have lots of really cool fabrics like this. Um, and it is it's all embroidered on there. So I have a heart a scout a scout tee out of this that I love. It is very thin. It's very thin. Look at that. You can see my probably see my fingers through it. So um, I thought I'd line them for her, but I think she's gonna like this. And I think I'm gonna have to use this as the binding. See, it's not so bad when you see just a little bit poking out, right? I need something washed. So yeah, Michelle. Ding ding ding. Yep. So the irony is before I started chicken boots and I had been freelance as a pattern drafter and designer for 11 years, I closed my business and my intent, I'm not kidding. And this was, this was 13 years ago, 13 years ago, probably it's gotta be at least 13 years ago. My intent was to start a line of patterns where you got, here's your shirt. And then this is how you change the pattern to do this, to do that, to do this. And so they were kind of like blocks, but with a style. So you could actually sew it right out of the package. But then you're like, okay, they, they're also an educational thing. And then there would be an educational component to make them fit you really perfectly. That way you had your block and then you could just keep building on it and layering on it. And it would be like a, is that like a modular thing, you know? So, um, and I got distracted. I got distracted because my friend and I were always trying to come up with the best knitting bag, you know, that kind of, that whole story. And so, and I was an avid knitter. And then uh, my friend, another friend convinced me to do a little fair because I had sewn lots of things just for fun on the side and just where they were just sitting there. And I got sidetracked. And there wasn't the support for being an indie pattern designer. I think Colette was brand new at the time. Or they, they, they may not have been brand new, but they were getting like that foothold. I don't even know. How long has Colette been around? I can think of them as one of the first indie pattern designers. Um, but, uh, and thank goodness, right? They really set the bar. I'm not a big fan of the current patterns as much as I am the Colette ones, but you know, very inclusive at least. 
All right, I'm gonna make some binding. We're gonna go over here and make some binding. Yep, block patterns and how to adjust them, but they would have had some style lines so that you weren't just like, ugh, I have to draft my own pattern. That's how everybody sounds, right? <laughs> This is all I have for binding. <laughs> it's gonna be really close. I'm gonna take this other piece too. It, there's gonna be a lot of seams in this binding. A lot of seams. I'm right-handed, so I always have to turn it around. I'm really tempted to put these through my binding machine, but, you know, it's not that much. I need, I think... 40 inches per leg, so I need 80 inches. I kind of measured. So let's see. What have I got? Might as well own up to it, right? And look right now. So right here I have 18. Might have it. Oof. These are getting smaller and smaller. We might have it. Sorry, I can't quite see chat. I'm almost done here, though. I didn't quite cut that straight, did I? I'm going to cut all of it. <laughs> I may need it all. All right. I, let's see. Let's hope I don't need this weird piece there. I know, Louise. I should have done it, right? I should have done it. And when I would explain it to people, they were like, huh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but at the time, you know, I was a full-time pattern drafter. I did design work, but I did it through pattern drafting. That was That's always been my best form of design through pattern drafting, not through sketching. Oh, I need to change my thread color. And um, I had the CAD program, I had the plotter. I still have the plotter, um, it's not hooked up. I was set up, I was really set up for it, but it sounded like I've always had a business I have to explain. I'm in that same boat now, I was in that same boat with chicken boots, I don't know. Having a product sounded really fun and exciting like that. And um, I don't know. But being a pattern company, would have had a, I would have had a product. So I don't remember why I didn't do it. Because the other thing I was, I've always tried to have to work around is this weird law in California that doesn't allow me to sew clothes and sell them without being, without having a uh, garment manufacturer's license. Yes, I know there are people who do it, but they're doing it illegally. And <clears throat> I was already on their radar, so I just was like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to have to get this garment manufacturer's license. It's like a few hundred dollars a year. You have to go to San Francisco and take this weird test. Um, and... Um, it cost, it wasn't $300 a year. Sorry, it was like $3,000 a year. Something like that. It was kind of a weird thing. And I didn't want to take that risk, you know? So it was just kind of a big investment at the time to me. Especially if you just don't know if it's going to happen. Even if you hire a factory that is sewing for you, you still have to do this. And a lot of people don't. Yeah, I know, Louise. And that's the other thing. is like It was too... It was too ahead, and I'm not patting myself on the back. Like, that is not a good thing to be too far ahead. 
Um, the other thing is like the thing that was giving me um, potentially some of the ideas to do that where some, they were starting to monkey around with the, the, the computer-aided drafting design programs, the CAD programs, to be made to measure. And there was this whole um, pattern pr software program called MTM, which was made to measure. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it and if it's around anymore. And so what you, it would do was everybody's dream. You would put your measurements in there, pick the design, and it would spit out the pattern. But there were so many problems with this because, you know, you had to have a design and it had to, you still have to do all of the work. And it's not like you, it's a guarantee, right? It's not doing the work for you. Just like a lot of people know, like CAD does not do the work for you as a pattern drafter. You don't just say, here's my design. Like, even if you do all the work, draft a perfect basic block of your design, your hoodie, put it in there. You don't push a button to grade it. You have to input the X and Y for every point and the points in between. Hope they um, are a nice, you know, consistent grade. Hope it's accurate. You have to print it all out. You have to sew it. You have to test it and you need to fix it. Whatever's gone wrong, right? And, and so with Made to Measure, you could have someone conceivably and and also websites then weren't what they are now 14 years ago websites were still kind of babies you know I mean when was Google born you know like Google was not I don't even think we had Google when I had this idea so um like having a website is why my business did so good nobody had a website because that was I was just really head with that you know so anyway you could have someone conceivably using made to measure and then putting in measurements that may not work with that design. So say their uh, measurements made it so that their waist was so dr much drastically, the difference between the bust and the hip was so drastic and maybe that design wouldn't allow for that, you know? And so then it was having its own issues and it, I think things like that kind of made me worry like, what if this doesn't work for everybody? And I really wanted it to work for everybody. And that is honestly like something I've had to get over just doing my own patterns just now. Like, okay, this isn't going to be perfect. Like I am going to make mistakes with my patterns and it bugs me, but I'm getting better at going, okay, this pattern is three quarters of the way done. Let's get it to the testers and then let's finish what we can. And there's still going to be issues like the bin bin. I already want to put a update for that out. You know, and I think that's what stops me right now doing clothing. I, I worry I'm not going to do a good enough job. And it's a lot of work. I, and I also wouldn't want one pattern. I would come out with like five designs. So you had like a little mini collection, you know, like so you had a mini wardrobe. All right, so these are lined and I, I just fully lined them and top stitched them down and kind of sewed them super fast. So let's just... I'm gonna bind these. This binding was washed, that's why I think it'll work. Ooh, the binding machine is calling my name. And I'm not gonna pull my binding on this because I don't want it to shrink anymore and do that weird thing it does, you know? But if you are interested in making these shorts, they're super cute. It's a Pearl Soho City Gym short pattern. It's free, it comes in, um, adult and child sizes. Oh, my my bobbin ran out right there and the stitching looks terrible. Dang, let me fix that. And I made them last year so there is a, uh, there is a video for it. I remember when this happened and I actually went back and looked and did, I think I looked at the other end. So I was like, God, that sounds like it sewed really terribly and I didn't see it. Like just the expense for me to get dress forms for doing a clothing line is daunting for me. Hey, Megan. Yeah, I finished my napkins. I'm just sewing Cricut some shorts. Uh, Megan, um, Hearts Fabric finally uh, was able to send me the Hudson pants. 
Did you ever make yours? <laughs> I've been waiting since February. Look at that, it's a little short. I'm gonna try and kind of smooth that out a little bit. And it's funny because uh, when I asked them about it, they would have sent the project anyway, but Lexi was like, um, could I sponsor the stream? Because I've, I have had my friend's fabric to make her those for a while. Would you sew them for me? <laughs> so it's actually Lexi of Hearts sponsoring the Hudson pants for you. <laughs> I love it. All right, there's one. And I think I have enough binding, yay. Hey, Daphne, how's it going? Okay, cool. Well, I will um, probably be making them in October. If you want to wait. But don't wait for me. Get them done if you want. You've been on a quilt rampage. It's very hard for me not to pull my binder. I'm so used to pulling it. lines up okay I think those will be cute but I think that they're so lightweight that they may be a little you know they might like bunch up sorry that's my presser foot going up and down so that I'm walking it across around the curve here making sure it lines up because it's not lining up on that edge there. But I was really close on the fabric. All right, no problem. <laughs> I know, isn't that nice, Louise? I didn't realize they were knit pants. <laughs> I don't know why, but every time I saw a picture of them, I was like, that is so interesting that those are uh, jogger looking pants, but they're woven. <laughs> I think it was just the fabrics I'd seen them made in. I thought they were wovens for some reason. And she sent like a French terry. And is there ribbed cuffs in that? I think there is. That's what made me go, oh, that's a rib cuff. I actually thought people were using like a stretch knit cuff on woven pants. It's probably why I never looked at that because I was I was skeptical and it had this very 90s flashback. Oh my god, I'm, I'm just like hacking these to bits here. If you weren't here, I'd be at my table with my rotary knife probably. Sheesh. Oh, um, the reason I'm not pulling right now, Ray, is because um, since it's the hem, I'm thinking that it would draw it in a little bit, you know? And you know how there's those weird, that weird garment in your, your wardrobe, you're like, everything about this is fine, but because this binding is on here, it draws it in a little bit. And if I did, because the binding is naturally stretchy, it would, it's like adding elastic to the edge. So if I stretch the binding as I put it on, it would draw in the fabric once I sewed it. I, I only stretch it when I'm doing bags, things that are really, really stout on edges that it just won't matter. They're, it's not going to create an elastic edge, but you can use binding kind of like a elastic. Oh my God, sorry, I am, I promise, better at cutting the scissors are not showing off my skills, that's for sure. They're not very sharp either. I'm just trimming off everything that's sticking out past the binding to make this next step really easy. It won't be as easy as it would be if I got to pull it, but hey. Uh, if you're doing these, you, you could iron them now. I'm not going to, um, but you can. And it makes it a little easier too. Oh, so maybe I have, Nicole. Yeah, I feel like I've seen that, you know? I was like, hmm, I don't know about that. Okay. 
So this is the right side of my short. So even if I don't land perfectly on the other side, it is okay, but we'll try. I, this is one of those times where I feel like, ooh, Cricket's really gonna love these and I'll be, watch, I'll be really wrong. You know when you do that? <laughs> no, and on the bag, the bag would be stout enough that it wouldn't allow it to draw in. You know, like, especially if it's on a edge with stiffener, it wouldn't draw in at all. It never folds up on the, okay, so make sure your seam allowance is the width that your binding is supposed to be. It shouldn't be too narrow or too wide. So see how my binding is the same width as my seam allowance? That kind of helps me. Um, I kind of harp on that when I'm doing an instructional video. I'll say make sure your binding is the same width um, and trim it down. And don't trim too much because it's really easy to, as, especially if you're used to garment sewing, you're kind of taught to trim things really close and it's really easy to do that, especially like on a corner and you don't really need to do that. You want the seam allowance to fill, to fill up the binding. If you trim it too short, <clears throat> you'll get a ridge in there, right? Like the seam allowance will be right here and then this will be kind of floppy. And when I do that by accident, my binding torques often. And I think it's just because it has nothing to stabilize it. It's almost like the seam allowance acts as a interfacing, you know? <laughs> yeah, so it really, Ray, it's just because the bag is stout enough that when I pull it, it's not going to draw it in. It can on certain edges. It's not to say that it doesn't, like, when, um, like, if you remember how that pocket is on the front of the zip double. The zip double is the one that's the clear bag with the zipper top and it has that kind of curved pocket on the front of it that's on the inside of the bag. So <clears throat> that's only a single layer of fabric and so when I have people sew that I say I want you to pull this binding as you're attaching it and it does make that piece suck in a little bit but because you're taking that pocket then putting it on the vinyl or whatever you're doing and stitching it down on the binding edges, it stabilizes it. So you can stretch it out and make it be okay. So, but on something like this, this fabric, this fabric is so lightweight and this fabric is more like a quilting cotton. This would win if I um, stretched this, it would just draw in the hem. I think you'll understand when you see the shorts too. I mean, I'm sure you remember these, but they would like cup her, <laughs> you know? So, and maybe that would be nice as far as like, uh, not security, what's it, uh, like modesty goes. That would be kind of nice on the, the ran ones I made her if it kind of cupped because she does feel she's like, these, and she wears some short stuff, you know? But she's like, yeah, these feel a little bit like like there's a breeze, you know? So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If a friend, yeah, well, if, you, if you're if you a knitter, you know this one really well. There's this whole thing during the holiday season on is the person you're knitting for worthy enough for the gift? And they call it knit worthy. <laughs> See, now this is pretty flat. You see that this is pretty flat? So normally if I had stretched this and put it on, it would be cupping like this, right? It would naturally turn under or do this. You can almost see it do it like that, like that napkin. The napkin I did cross cut and I, I relaxed it too, so it's not a good example. All right, so let's do this other one. Oh, I bet, Megan. I saw this really funny <laughs> um, picture, and it was this beautiful um, elderly woman, probably in her 90s, and it said, this is Sue. <laughs> she is 38 years old. <laughs> she has been homeschooling kids, <laughs> homeschooling four kids. <laughs> I was like, oh. 
I really feel for all you guys out there. I sent that to my sister. Where's my all? <laughs> oh, really, Ray? That's funny. Short stream. I didn't. I have not sewn enough shorts on this stream. I wear so many dresses. It's funny because I realized uh, this year I didn't wear any of my uh, sleeveless dresses. You've been drinking a lot. Yeah, exactly. I know when we got back into our house this week, the next day my husband was like, could you stop by and get some whiskey? I was like, oh. It took a toll. There's a lot of threads. I'm fighting. There's four layers of fabric. Oh, wait, four? Just two. Why does it feel like four right there? I guess because of the binding. And it, it sees how fluff this this is kind of a fluffy one. If there's any embroidery, it gets a little fluffy. Well, I I this is such a side track. This project definitely was like a I'm sidetracked, distracted project. I'm one of those uh, people that if I have an idea, I have to I have to do it. And um, this has been something I have fought with for decades because I realized it when I after I had my daughter because it became debilitating in a way. Not every idea should be acted on, and that's what I've had to teach myself. Oh gosh, Derek, yeah, it's so bad here in the states that their home there's a lot of uh, homeschooling happening. I heard Scotland's doing pretty good, though, as far as your COVID cases. What? Who hasn't used the steam ripper, Michelle? I think the no sleeveless dress, I think it's because of COVID. Well, I'm still, like, going to work and stuff, and it's been hot. I don't know why. I think they're just at the back of my closet. You know what it is? I know what it is. I hate wearing the strapless bra with it. I think pokes after a while. That's what it is. Because I actually looked at it the other day, like last week, and I was like, oh, I love this dress. And then I was like, oh, but I have to wear that one bra that's actually really comfortable. But by like 2 o'clock, I'm ready to rip off, so... If you know, you know. It's like... It's like uh, got that um, sticky side to it, so it sticks to me. So that's another aspect. It's like, uh, uh. <laughs> oh me? Oh well, it's I've done this a lot, and I and I set it up. You know, I've used my seam ripper today. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, so now. This is the longest step of these shorts. Other than that, they're really fast to make. But the waistband, they do have you do um, as a separate casing. So let's see how they look. Barrette, I feel like I've been swallowing threads lately. If I, I think I could make these reversible if I don't put my la label. I think that binding looks pretty cute. You know? Wow, yeah. Add strap, strap, add straps. Well, that's, I couldn't with that dress. I mean, I didn't use my seam up run here, but this was pretty easy. It's all cotton, it's woven and easy enough, right? All right, so now, um, you uh, stitch the side seam right on top of the other. So this is, if you've made the lakeside pajamas, these are sewn a little differently. So don't just assume you sew them like the lakeside pajamas, just so you know. Pineapple rum, pineapple and mango juice. <laughs> oh my God. That sounds so dangerous. Yeah, that's too easy to drink. <laughs> At 
my husband asked me last night if I have a gla- if I want a glass of wine, and then I was like, no, I'm gonna have ice cream. It's usually like one or the other for me, like calorie wise. <laughs> like, do I want ice cream or alcohol? There's days I have both. Don't worry. But um, how far up, how far down do I go with this? I can't remember. I guess I could just go like there. Um, and uh, and then when he was like, this dinner is not good. We are not eating this again. He was kind of laughing and we didn't finish it. I was like, well, I guess now I can have both. <laughs> I didn't have half my dinner. I just went back up this side just in case she ends up making them reversible. It would stitch the other side down. This is firm. That is... That feels like boning all, almost five days a week. Oh. Are you guys shaming me for not using a steamer for... Knock it off. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do this one. Maybe I'll mark it, though, so it's in the same spot. There's a pin. Is that, does that, like, if you were watching a how-to video and you saw someone sewing and they didn't use pins and clips, would that bug you? Asking for a friend. But then, but they said, if you need to use pins and clips, do so. You can totally do that. slipped a little bit. See, I could use the seam ripper there, but why? They're free shorts for my daughter. There wasn't enough fabric to make me a pair. And I actually don't really like this style on me, but I will say, like, for those of you who see this style and think, oh, dolphin shorts from the 80s, those are a little too um, short. They're actually not. They're, they're actually really great. I have a pair, and every time I put them on, I'm like, oh, these are actually really good. <laughs> you have the ingredients. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. There is someone who delivers. You can't justify doing it if you're not making a mistake. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> these are cute. What's nice about this, the binding, is that on this fabric, because it's so lightweight, is it provides structure. And I think maybe then they'll crumple less, like right through here. These are really cute. I wonder if they're too flashy for her. So then um, the waistband, oh, that's right. I had to cut it in two pieces. Oh, this is so lightweight. This is so lightweight. I think it'll be okay though. I have to piece these together though. I think what I'm gonna do is um, get this like 95% done and then try them on her with the elastic in them, but the elastic not sewn. But I think that, you know, she's just gotten like taller uh, so the others, the elastic is getting a little too small, like it's slipping up, so. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, Sydney. That, that sounds good. And I do say, I do that. I'm the friend I'm asking for, obviously. Because I think, like... Ginger Elizabeth, that's cute. I am doing elastic waistband, but it's the kind that's inside here. Like this. Do I clean? I'm gonna clean finish it actually. I'm gonna clean finish it so that they're um, reversible and I'm gonna take this tag off. Which way would you wear these? Let's see. I think these are cute this way too. Um, 
Yeah, so like I I definitely like on the collar stand video I pin that and I don't fast forward it. I actually sit there and pin it and you can fast forward it if you want. But um on other things, yeah, I feel like I'm all I'm an advocate for not pinning unless you need it. I think when we get faster, we get happier with making things because it doesn't take as long. And if you can kind of find some time saving things like not pinning, that's good. I don't push it though. I don't really care. I need pins sometimes. All right, so I'm going to sew this. Let's see here. I could do it at the side seam. There's no side seam, but. Cool. Cool. So I'm going to put this in quarters. I'm really liking markers lately. Rather than cutting anything. Bye, Sydney. See you later. Nice seeing you. I can't wait to see your quilt when you get to it. And what project do you start? <laughs> all right, so let's make sure my waistband still is gonna fit. Always the uh, scary bit, right? It might not. It's a little bit small, but I'm gonna make that work. Okay. Yeah, armholes, uh, collar sleeves, waistbands. Yeah, I pin all those things. And yes, yeah, sleeves for the armholes. I agree with you on that one. Certain things I don't, I like, or sometimes I'll just do like the landmarks, you know, like, oh, the shoulders and the, did I just unthread my needle? No. The, or like uh, the shoulders, the center front, the center back, you know, and then that way I have some flexibility when I go to do it. Oh, look at that. Oh, lined up perfectly. Okay. This isn't as bad as I thought. Okay. I thought it was going to be a little bit of a struggle. Dang. I wasn't sure if I was cutting out the right waistband. That's why I'm so impressed. <laughs> These are seriously something I would just sell if she doesn't like them, though. Alright, am I going to make it? That was a little off when I finally got to it. I got cocky. Alright, come on. Come on, get all these threads. I don't like pulling them out later, you know? Get them, out, get, them, get, get them towards the seam allowance first. All right, so this is matching up. Yep, yep. I think I might record another video today on how to attach an elastic, um, Elastic to a waist with the serger. Remember like I showed you guys on that one, on the 100 axis sewing pant? Hey Karen, nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, you hate the snag. Man, I understand. Tag. Well, do you think I should? What if they're, if they're reversible? I'll just leave the tag off because then they could be reversible. My ego doesn't need the tag. Oh. oh. I did make napkins. Yeah. Um, I could uh, go over like what we what I decided, but the uh, for me the one that won was the fringe. Um, and I think that there's a couple others that if you didn't want that fringe look that the um, sewn and turned and top stitched or the hemmed are good runners up but they can they can you know crumple a little bit whereas the fringe doesn't 
Um, and then I'll, I'm going to show a picture. I'll post pictures of it. And then I sewed the rest of mine. So I sewed four of them sewn and turned. They're right here. So here's my sewn and turned ones and double top stitched. And then I obsessively folded them. So I have four like that. And then um, I made three that'll be fringed. So I just sewed around the perimeter. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that edge out and even it up. That's gonna take a while. Take a while to fringe. And then these are the ones I washed, except for two. So my fringe one, here's this one. It has not been ironed. Right, no, 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 no. I was gonna say that feels ironed. This one. This one has not been ironed. This is my fringe one. It's not done. But you can see this is how the corner was. This one, the fringe is not con like it's not done right here, so it's flipping up. But this is nice and flat. I did not iron this. These are curling, but they're not fringed yet. So this was the method. I, I kind of knew that was gonna happen just because I have some like that, but um, I feel like that works really good. So I made two more like that. I'm gonna fringe this one. I'm gonna cut the binding off. The binding worked pretty good, but it's still crumpled. And I don't really like the binding edge as far as like the heaviness goes with these yarn dies. So I stitch inside here. And then when I go to fringe it, I'm just gonna remove the binding. And then, um, the other two was the the hemmed one here and that did pretty good so this one's unironed as well but it did do a little bit of crumpling I don't know if it'll get better or worse with age so I'm gonna leave these as an experiment and here's my sewn and turned one that I did and washed and it's a little crumpled as well but not too bad so these are pr pretty good I cut them on the grain and double thick yeah because they're not very heavy I also think some of the things I would do if I really wanted to make sure is um, uh, maybe qu quilt them without anything in between, you know, and that would give more stability. I'm just looking for these spots so I have some landmarks for my next spot, my next thing. So now I'm just um, sewing these, finishing these shorts for my daughter. And I made them reversible. I had them all assembled. I just needed to uh, bind them and put this waistband on. I'm just hanging out with you guys now. So I'm going to sew these like this. And I'm going to check. Do I have a piece of elastic here? I just want to make sure I have enough room to put... So I might do this really narrow, make sure like that. Cause the elastic is a little, you know, it takes up some of the width by its thickness, you know? I should have ironed this honestly. I'm gonna pull it though. I did. I made a top for my husband. Um, that was for the the uh, Fairfield, and I had quite a bit left, so I was able to line four of the napkins with it. And then the other two, I used the um, Essex yarn dyed linen, which I actually think is a really good choice for napkins. I would, I feel like I worked really hard to find napkin fabric, and then. The Essex was kind of all always under my nose, <laughs> you know? It's not as like, uh, you know, knockout print or design on it. It's pretty simple, but that's kind of nice in its own way, you know? If you're doing this, definitely iron. Oh, I ran out of, you know what? That's the sewing fairy. That was the sewing fairy. We're going to the iron. <laughs> We're going to the iron. Sometimes you know. I'm going to turn these. I was going to iron this up. 
This fabric is so thin, I really need to give it as much help as possible, you know? Yeah, I think, um, did I make a top out of this? Yes, sorry, I got the confused. I made the Scout tee out of this fabric and then I had this um, awkward amount left, like it was a lot, but not enough for anything for me. And it just hit me a couple days ago, I was looking at my patterns for something else and I was like, I know Cricket really likes the city gym shorts I made her. And she always wears the prototype. She likes the prototype better than the rayon pair because the rayon pair, she feels, she feels like they feel breezy is what she says. You know, they feel a little bit like people can see up them and, um, and they, they glide. They're nice, but they're just, they definitely feel less secure for like an active short, you know? So, um, it just hit me. I was like, oh, I bet I could make her pair those shorts out of how much I have left. And it worked perfect. So that's why I did it. And they're reversible. I lined them with the same fabric. So just because I wanted them to have more body. And it, they don't need to be reversible. But thanks for subscribing. Welcome, welcome. Today's stream's kind of unique. I have some pins here, so let's uh, pin a few of these. You know? Pinning is good. I'm going to try and make this as uh, wide as possible because my elastic is one inch. I only cut the waistband three inches wide, and then I used a half inch seam allowance there, so yeah. So this is where I started. I know I need a little bit more than one inch. I don't know why. The the uh, waistband pattern is wider than that. It's more like four and a half inches. It's really wide. I don't like all that extra fabric. I clipped it and then I decided, let's do a quarter inch seam allowance. Good thing I didn't clip any more. All right, so I'm going to block this right here off like this. So I remember to stop so I have a place to put my elastic. I don't usually like making waistbands like this, I have to be honest. But they do turn out pretty nice. They're just a little bit fiddly. Um, I don't like them because the elastic can um, turn in the casing, you know. I don't like that. I like surging it onto the waistband, but I did not think about that with these, and I can't do that with the binding side, so it's fine. I'll just stitch down the elastic once it's sewn. Sorry, my throat's really, really raw <laughs> from the smoke and not talking to people. <laughs> so next Saturday, I am going to hopefully be finishing the jelly roll quilt we did together. All right, this is more prep than I usually give myself. Wait, let's put this in here. Let's get this one here. This fabric is so thin. It's so hard. Ugh thinner man it is it just makes it hard you know all right <laughs> right gargle with pork god that sounds like such a good idea <laughs> love pork i haven't had pork in forever wow you might be on to something. There's this uh, winery. Um, where's that at? Is it in Healdsburg? It's in California called Trentadu. And they make this chocolate port that is actually really good. I'm not big on things like that, but it's really good. They make other things too, but I really like that chocolate port. In fact, you know what I forgot about? 
Robin Williams' brother was a rep for that winery. And that's how I, I met, I met, um, he was at a, uh, like, it was like an art thing at the first, the first of every month, oh, we're still out of Bobbin. Um, the first of every month in Eureka, they have this thing called Arts Alive to help the local downtown businesses. And then they have like an artist, um, and it helps the artists, um, they get to show their work in a place for a month. And then they have like a, a reception and a lot of places have wine and that's, he was at one of those. And someone said, that's Robin Williams' brother. And he looked and sounded like him. Totally forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. Chocolate port. I'm gargling with that, Derek. <laughs> and then I mess well. <laughs> He's yum. Yeah, we have air purifiers, but uh, purifies the air coming into the house, not the air in the house, I don't think. It's attached to our air conditioner. And the thing is, our power was out for a few days, while we were, especially while we were gone. We closed the house the best we could before we left. That's awesome. Yeah, the winery, winery like made around here is... You know, but um, this is over by like in Sonoma. I feel like I'm sewing. These are so thin. I feel like I'm sewing on the short, the other short. short. I don't know why I'm doing this like this. Turn these inside out if you have a flatbed machine like me, like this. So you can see and you don't accidentally sew on the other side of your short. I'm going to straighten this out as I go a little bit because I ironed it a little bit crooked. But I, I really want to give myself the biggest casing I can for one inch without getting too big, of course. And I'm trying to make it all so there's no torquing. And there's not. I'm doing pretty good, actually. Once it's all scrunched up, it'll be fine. Haunted? Wow. A haunted winery? That makes me think of like um, the ghosts in Hogwarts Castle. At first, the ghosts from the Disney Haunted House popped into mind because they do seem a little bit drunk. <laughs> but then I thought of Peeves. But he's not a ghost, he's a poltergeist. All right, I'm gonna stop right here. Um, I'll allow that for the elastic. I'm gonna put the elastic in right now, but um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut it or finish it, cause I'm gonna fit them to Cricut first. Um, I don't. I have to go get it. Sorry, guys. I didn't know I'd be doing that. kind of cooled it on the on the Hogwarts speak you know I wasn't really too pleased with some things JK Rowling said this year and um, I kind of cooled it but um, when in times of stress for me that has been my happy place in fact I like to joke that uh, you can tell what my stress level is by which movie I'm watching or listening or book I'm listening to it's kind of like DEFCON 5 you know, that kind of thing. But for me, it's like if I'm watching or listening to book seven or the movie seven or eight, you know my stress level's really high because <laughs> that's my, that one is the, like most people's least favorite because they're really dark and kind of moody and melancholy. And I just love that first half. I think it's really got awesome. And if I'm, it's more lighthearted, it's more of like a Order of the Phoenix, you know, when you have the brothers kind of giving what's what 
to Umbridge. You know, everyone hates the Umbridge ones, but honestly, those are actually really good because the brothers really give it to her, so. <laughs> look at this roll. I just, I've had this roll last for a while, but look at this. Can you see that? It's, oh, you can't. The center is about to pop out. Look at that. What does that mean? Is this separate? No, it is attached. That is so weird. You can't see it because of the camera, but. Yikes. I don't want that to fall apart. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to cut a piece that's about the same as the casing. That's way too big. Uh, my daughter's very petite. Uh, but I think like she grew last year, you know, like she's getting more her adult body. And so I think that those are a little too small for her. Ooh, is that, I have to do the little like safety pin thing. All right, you guys, where's my safety pin? We had to find one last time. I'm looking at my um, pin cushion there. I need a safety pin. I have my loop turner, but I can't use it in a circle. Where did I put it? Where did, remember that? Remember I needed the um, safety pin? Shoot, I don't have one. Oh, I used a paper clip, right? Shoot. Mm -hmm. So I'm losing it someday, so, so much. <laughs> I'm losing it mentally. Hmm. Gosh, I had to do this at home recently and it took forever. Can I use it? I'm gonna use a paper clip. If I push it that way, it has that edge. If I go this way, okay, I'm gonna try that. Okay. It is what it is. Um, if you're doing these kinds of waistbands where the <clears throat> elastic is in here, a nice touch. I do ha have a bodkin, I think. No, it's at home. Wait. That's a good idea. What did I do with that? I have all the binding trial for these shorts here. Let me move this. You guys are going to remind me where that is. have a safety pin. <laughs> yeah, safety pins aren't that. I know, I have some really, I'm going to bring those here because I, I remember I found these bodkins the other day and I was like, that's too many of these things here because they were my grandmother's. So I have mine and my grandmother's. But anyway, what I was going to say is if you're doing a waistband that is like uh, one solid piece, like, you know, the elastic's one piece in there. If you edge stitch the top here, it's a nice touch and it makes your casing look more professional. So I'm wondering if I have enough room to add mine. I probably don't. It's very, very close. Because I have to take into account the width of the elastic. But I think what I'm going to do once I get this in here and I get the right size for my daughter, I'm going to probably stitch down the middle of my elastic while it's stretched so that I can ensure that it doesn't twist 
Um, cause this, this is the kind of waistband that twists and it, that is such a pet peeve, right? So I don't, and hers does, even though I've stitched it down, you can already see it wanting to do that, honestly. So I'll probably stitch this down a couple times, uh, maybe even like here and here, you know, kind of like store-bought style. Look at that. See, it's already doing it. It's a little too tight for this. Three-quarter inch elastic would be better for this casing. It's going to work, but not my first preference. All right, first test. I got to get past seam allowance. Edge stitch before, before, um, before. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. This is a fiasco. I'm definitely at Harry Potter DEFCON 12 right now. Same. Just have a safety pin hand hand, you know? Come on. How hard is it for me to have a safety pin around here? I literally cannot find where that happened. Well, there it is. It's about to happen again. <gasps> Where's the edge? Yeah, me too, Ray. I do that too. I think that works pretty good for the most part. Hey, Nancy. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. It just, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know, Michelle. Because I moved back a little bit, I think. This is not my ideal way. Sorry. I know I look like a a full-on noob doing it this way. <laughs> Guys, don't do it this way. <laughs> yeah, on my uh, Caroline pajamas and my free-range slacks, um, some of the types of elastic I used, I had to stitch down four in four spots. Others, like this, I like braided elastic. I feel like braided elastic works the best as long as it's not confined. And right now, like being that tight in the casing, a little confined. I'm trying to get past my seam allowance right now. I did it. Okay, good. Wait, did I? Yeah, I did. Good, good, good. I feel like I'm caught on something again. If I can get it to a certain point, I can use my loop turner for the rest. See, I like it tight because I like the gathers to look like that, you know, but it's a little too big. The elastic is the width. I always think my elastic is three quarters of an inch and it's not, it's one. <laughs> Coke's on you. Jinx, buy me a Coke. I know, right, Penny? Yeah. Okay, we're almost there. Once I, as long as I can get it to the other, out the other end, we will be okay. And as long as it's not stretching too much, it won't twist too bad. The non-roll, I don't like the non-roll because it's really thick and I feel like it, um, it rolls. I'm glad to see Megan has luck with it because I don't, you know. All right, we're almost there. Good thing she's a slip of a kid. It's uh, folding though, I can feel it. All right. Have you ever done this where you're just like, I just need to get it to the end and then you pull it out, you do that. And then you go to adjust it and you suck it in. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to 
Do I sew that so that I don't? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna sew these together. Like that. And now I'm gonna adjust it. <laughs> this kind of went badly. Maybe I'll just take this out and use three quarter inch elastic. That might be better. You know? Because that's already wanting to do too much, too much bending. Don't you dare leave in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that's a good idea, Meg. If I had a uh, safety pin, I would do that. And the light fabric wasn't that lightweight. I think that's a really good tip. Like, I used to do that. I would take this end and I would safety pin it to the pant shorts so that it wouldn't get sucked through. But this is, like, ridiculous. It just wants to stretch. It's so stretchy. I think what will have to, it'll be like, you know, a little bit stretched like that. Let me get this nice and flat. This is already twisted. This one's already twisted. That's what's going on. That's what it is. So I've sewn it now twisted. But we'll be able to fix that when I try it on her. Yeah. I made this elastic really big. <laughs> There's a little bit of a, here we go. See on this, this is where the seam is and it's just, just the seam makes it so that it has no stretch and it wants to confine it. I should use three quarter inch elastic. You kind of need about a quarter of an inch in there. Maybe a little less for what I like to call the kerf of the elastic. And then you could all, then you'd have room to put that little top stitch. Now, if you have, if it's really going to be kind of big, you can actually do that little top stitch edge up to a quarter inch down. It kind of creates that paper bag looking, which is kind of cute. All right. Well, now I can try them on her, you know, I really did that on the front, huh? Wow. Way to keep track. All right, let's flip this around though. I'm gonna flip this right now. So that she doesn't say something. Yeah. Slug bugs. Oh gosh. How many how many of us have had that game banned? That's more like it that wasn't when I was a kid, but I've I've been around parents who had to ban it with their kids. <laughs> slug bug when anytime you see a VW bug driving by, you say slug bug and you punch the person next to you. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Michelle explained it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so hopefully she likes these. Hopefully she'll model them. I may be removing the elastic. Um, I thanks for hanging out with all my grain line obsessive talk on napkins. And uh, I'll be uploading. Well, it's already uploaded. I'll be releasing the two videos: how to sew the yoke, not a burrito style, but clean finished, and collar and collar stand on a shirt. So that will be, I'll do that in like the next half hour probably. So thanks for hanging out with me. Next weekend I will most likely be doing my twin duvet covers of the jelly roll quilts that we all sewed together. And if not, I'll have something else. Maybe, maybe stream this week. Look at all the things we did. Got napkins. 
I'm going to be fringing all week long. All my napkins. They look really weird on camera, color-wise. Right, Michelle? That's what I think, too. I Oh, I have seen the... I haven't seen the new VW bus in person, but I've seen... Yeah, Punch Buggy. Leslie, that's what I always heard. Punch Buggy. Punch Buggy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, hopefully, everybody got their prizes, too, um, that I mailed out. I know Michelle got hers, but I'm hoping everybody else got theirs. The three from the giveaway. Those were fun. And then I'll do the poll results, too. I learned, had to learn how to see my poll results on Instagram story. I had to message Laura Jean from Knitted Wit, because I know she does those things. I was like, how do I see this? And then I was like, can you do a video? <laughs> And then she showed me. I was like, oh, okay. I found, you had to like swipe down. and eh. Anyway, all right. I want to do that to your flannel quilt. Oh, the little fringe. No, I don't. No, I don't. You saw one in person? Yeah, that thing's cute. Dang. My husband sees one of those. It's all over. <laughs> He'll get rid of the RV and his Tesla. <laughs> All right, um, you have touched every page of your book. Oh, yeah, that book's pretty cool. <laughs> that's cool. I'm glad that that you said that that was the book you were gonna buy anyway. So that's that's really cool. Do you do you have you ever carved things like that? I've done a lot of that for um, just for print printing on like paper, only a little bit on fabric, and it's so satisfying. And you need so few tools. And I just get those those blocks that are like. I call it eraser blocks. It's like rubber. And then um, the little carving tool thing. Definitely get that. And that don't, the, the, the linoleum block is really hard and it's, you can injure yourself a little easier. And people say they la the linoleum block lasts longer, but the rubber thing, I've never had any of those dry out and fail and I don't even take care of them. So I don't use the brayer thing the roller thing I don't know if she t teaches how to do that I've never had luck with that so but I think it's really fun to play around with that kind of printmaking I should have looked at that book closer because I'd like to see how she does repeats I'm all I'm fascinated by repeats so all right well I will see you guys next Saturday you'll see some videos from me today maybe again next week and um, I'm still working on some classes and also a, the zoom meet up type of thing and maybe even some drop in sewing help so yeah yeah and it's not very expensive to get those supplies so yeah and you can do it like you'll find like i used um jacquard i think it's jacquard fabric paints and they were great they like impregnate in the fabric and they um uh, like you can't feel them on the surface and they wash beautifully. So yeah, definitely. I know the design thing that's for me too, but you never know what can be a design. So, all right, you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe out there and I will see you guys in, um, next weekend at the latest. So.